What's up? I'm Alex, your daily code mentor. Today I want to show you how to set up authentication with Redux and Strapi. So the beauty of authentication with Redux is that you press a button, you log in, and voila, you're logged in everywhere. You don't have to think about this. So one downside that I have to mention before getting into this is that whenever you're going to be working with Next.js, setting up Redux actually gets a little messy. So if you're planning on doing server-side rendering, my advice would be to either look into server-side rendering solutions that are very compatible with Redux or avoid using Redux. That's my true advice when you're doing server-side rendering. That said, <coughs> when you're building a single page application such as this one, which is basically a prototype for a mobile application they're going to be building, um, I don't care about server-side rendering at all. So I can uh, proceed with this. As you can see, the second I press logout, it logs me out. The second I press login, it does an asynchronous request and it logs me in. So I really enjoy this setup and I want to share with you. So uh, this is my backend actually. Uh, we can see the backend by going on localhost 1337 slash admin. The reason why we can see all of this admin panel is because Strapi allows us to, uh, basically gives us gives this for free. And uh, normally when you set it up, you will only have users, uh, which is basically a particular data type. And as you can see, a user has a username, an email, and a password, etc., etc. So how does this all work? There's a couple of endpoints which you need to be aware of. So the way we do that is we go on strapi.io and we search for the documentation. It's going to take a couple seconds. Anyway, the URL that we're interested in are the registration and the uh, local signup. So this would be the local signup um, URL, while there's going to also be a second URL that has to do with signup. So if you are in the Strapi documentation, you can just click on plugins, users and permissions, and you will be able to see your authentication. This is how you use the token. We'll get into that in a second. This is how you register. You just do out slash local slash register. And then you're going to have to pass three parameters, username, email, and password. Okay. And for uh, signing up, for logging in, you just do off slash local. And then you just pass identifier and password, which could be either the username or the email. Okay, now let's open up Atom. Let's open it up on the Accountably front-end, which is my application. And as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is a setup I've been working with. Um, the, the pages folder that you see here uh, is arguable. I'm starting to like it, though. I like the fact that I have a pages folder where I have all of my pages. And it typically matches, uh, I, I would say, a Next.js project where um, these are the root pages, these are pages with subfolders, etc., etc. This is a convention that I enforce myself. So if I go on app.js, I can show you that I still import everything. And then I have to enforce the convention myself by setting up the routes here. And I also set up two different types of routes, the logged out route and the private route beside the normal route. So the logged out route means that if the user is, not, is logged in, we're going to just redirect you out. And the logged, uh, the, the private route requires you to actually be logged in. Now, as I said, I wanted to show you the sign up with Redux. So what I can do is I can show you the page for login, uh, because uh, at this point the form in, for the login is just inside of the page. So I have a class component. The reason why I use a class component here. Uh, is actually twofold. Technically, you can do this with hooks, etc. But the, the way I built my own libraries for building inputs and stuff is that I, buy, that I have to bind these functions. So I'm sure there's a way to do it without because technically you could pass a, a, a change uh, um, change value parameter so you can uh, use hooks. Uh, maybe we can investigate that in a separate video. But that said, I use my handle change and generate input, which by the way I mentioned in, a, in another video. Uh, with the simple React Native uh, input library. Um, this was likely I'm going to open source, by the way. So if you like this uh, idea of being able to build your inputs in 10 seconds, uh, let me know, because uh, I feel like this is the most simple yet versatile approach. 
uh, formic uh, redux form they are better they are more flexible uh, or rather they are more complete but they are also less flexible this is so easy to get into because generate input just generates a form with a bunch of options so anybody can understand this formic and redux form can take a little bit more time and uh, the um, the pattern, the design pattern that I use is that I have containers such as this one, sign up uh, uh, is a container, uh, which will log in the user, uh, but uh, I don't put the state for name, email, and password in the Redux state because there's no reason to do that. This uh, component lives and dies, it does its purpose. This state is very ephemeral, it only matters for that specific component, and then once it's done, it's done. So I don't put that part on Redux because it would just make, I would just have to write three times the code for no reason. So I just do this, I just bind my handlers and I generate them. And then when I submit, and by the way, the beauty of this library um, that I've uh, perfection over time is that uh, um, I can also set uh, this uh, form to uh, be uh, disabled if you don't uh, edit it. So not, this is not say that not edited. As you can see initially, so if you, if you were to remove everything, which I guess it wouldn't unset the value, but if you had no values here, I guess I can do that uh, by going here on localhost 3000 slash sign up. You should see that, again, the, I can't click the button. Why? Because there's no data. So if you do set it up, you, you do. Obviously, there, you, you would have to write better validation functions. There's no validation here. But that said, at this point, we generated the input. We have our button. We have all of our nice stuff. And uh, what happens next? I'll show you the action creator and the reducer. Actually, I'll show you the reducer first. The reducer is a joke. The reducer just says, fetch user, return the payload.data. And log at user return action dot payload. Technically, you could just have re return null. You could literally just write null here. It would be the same thing, uh, but it's not a big deal. That said, the action instead is going to have a get token, set token, clear token, which I'm going to discuss later. And then we're going to have our fetch user, log at user, an exception. We have our get token to get the token, which is the JWT token, right? The authentication token that we need to do uh, authenticate request. Uh, this endpoint is the fetch user. It basically leverages the endpoint that Strapi uses called slash me. So I'm going to search for slash me, which actually doesn't seem to be here, which is fine because it's uh, basically some of the documentation for Strapi is not uh, as uh, uh, perfect as it would be. That's why I would highly recommend you taking my course that I'm working on. So if you're interested in the Strapi course that I'm building, uh, definitely leave a comment. I'm going to give you a discount if you do. And uh, basically, in the, the Strapi course, uh, um, I cover all of the foundational skills required to build an API, the foundational skills for authentication, how to do events, how to use the difference between controller services and models and schema. And uh, uh, we also touch upon working with uh, uh, plugins. And basically, we touch upon all of the skills that allow you to be lethal with Strapi. And also, we build a bunch of stuff, which is uh, probably the coolest part. As you may, uh, I mean, I guess you can believe it or not, but uh, uh, this whole project probably took me 45 minutes at this point. And as you can see, I have uh, some decent UI done with uh, Semantic UI React and a login and a sign up that is working. Uh, by the end of tomorrow, I'm going to actually have uh, the rest of the application working. And that's because uh, uh, the beauty of um, Strapi is that I can just come in the content tab builder. Let's say I want to build a new uh, friendship with you. And I can just say name and uh, description and uh, relationship between users. And uh, I'm good. One to one. So, and I save, and now I have access to the get, the post, the put, the delete for any of these. I need to do granular uh, control in um, granular access to the specific uh, rules. I just go to the uh, public route. I, this means that they're all inactive. You can't do anything. And then I go to the authenticated one, and maybe I want you to see the friendships, and uh, you just to find and find one, and you're good. Now, the other part of this is called policies, 
and policies are a bunch of rules that you put in the back end that uh, basically determine whether you can uh, as you can see my git is tracking the change and as you can see it literally built all this functionality in 10 seconds okay and this code is not bloated at all as you can see it's actually pretty insane I love it so much this is because it's uh, the core services are already there, so it's basically extending core services. It's incredible. If you think about how incredible this is, that I just define the data and I get it, I love this. I love it so much. That's why I'm. Uh, uh, I be, I think I saved hundreds of thousands of dollars to the companies I work with by using this tool. Okay, I know it's um, there's a little bit of downsides, such but there's downside with anything, uh, even writing stuff on Node.js, and. Uh, the second you know how to build with Node.js, I would highly recommend switching to Strapi because you know you know how to do your Mongoose, you know how to do your Express, you know how to do all that stuff, your passport, etc. Then just switch to Strapi. Why waste time? Why why waste time building stuff that you already know? Why waste time on optimizing things that you shouldn't be optimizing? Why waste time building boilerplate? All of your projects most likely look the same. Why are you rewriting all of them? Just use Strapi. Don't waste your time. 10 seconds versus 10 hours. Why the fuck would you waste your time? Just jump on the course with Strapi, leave a comment below, and I'm going to give you an insane discount. I'm also going to make you part of the tribe if you leave a comment on this one. So uh, to finish this up, the beauty of this pattern in the front end is that, well, let's finish up the sign up. How does it work? You just log in, you have your identifier, your password, you do an asynchronous request, and then you return your payload. How does it work? It works because our store, which is here, store.js, uses a promise. Okay, by using promise from Redux promise, we're able to return a promise instead of returning in um, directly the object. So that way, uh, our, our reducers work. We could also use Redux Funk. In my experience, Redux Funk makes life messier. All of the students I work with that uses Redux Funk had a hard time. So I would recommend only using it if you actually need it. I will eventually use it in this project because with Redux Funk I can build uh, asynchronous notifications that self-delete. So that's something where I just need Redux Funk and, uh, and that's why I will use it eventually. However, for now, I would highly recommend against using it unless you do truly need it. So what is the beauty of this old pattern? Your user is uh, fetched here in the connect in the app.js. It's passed through the routes, only in the routes where it's relevant. And that way, you have your private route, your non-private route, and uh, you don't even need to have a connect on your pages, basically, which is pretty cool. And um, to extend this, uh, uh, I'm going to have a folder called components, another folder called containers. The containers will be the files that are not pages that may also be connected to, that will also be connected to Redux. Okay? So all in all, we generate a form. We get the data, we do the submit. I love this pattern of loading true and loading false. Maybe I should do this just to highlight it. And I also love this pattern, which is something that I teach. If you're a student of mine, you recognize this. This is the name of the file, the name of the method, the name of the parameter, the value of the parameter. Okay, and then I extend it with another name of parameter, value of parameter, just to simplify my life. And uh, I like this idea of loading true, loading false, because as you can see, it gives amazing user experience. The user experience is flawless. It's, it's amazing, I love it. And then we have a simple redirect, which is done here, but it's also enforced through the uh, private and logged out route. The second you see the user, you just get redirected away. Uh, the reason why I had to not have an, I have an alert on the private route, but not on the logged out route, is because, uh, first of all, I have an alert just to save time. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use uh, Redux Funk to do pro proper notifications. However, uh, the logged out route will get triggered every instant because uh, at every instant the, the the thing is true. So it would alert too many times and gets super annoying. So that said, you saw how to do setup, how to get it done. Uh, let me know if you actually want to uh, want me to do a video in which I actually build this. I think it would be cool. Uh, most likely, it's gonna be part of the Strapi. Strapi Quick Start course. It's going to be uh, an extremely short and sweet course that gets you up and running with React and Strapi. I, I know for a fact that that course will help every single guy, guy or person, every single one of you that actually wants to build things. Like if you are a very practical person, a hands on person that likes to build stuff, that course is for you. So I want you to leave a comment right now saying that you're interested in the course. That way I can uh, um, 
tailor it to you and that way I'll also give you a discount because I appreciate your taking action. That said, I'm Alex, the Code Mentor. I wish an amazing day. Talk soon.